Hey beautiful people, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Crystal and this is Bond Book Reviews. Today, my reading room is looking a little different. I did a bit of a reorganization and I now have my reading chair chilling in amongst all of my shelves. So I figured may as well film a video for you guys now that it's all set up and ready to go. <music> Before we dive into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you for everyone who's new, everyone who's been around for a while, and make sure you do give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, the button's down below. Hit that little notification bell so that you do get notified when I put new videos out every Friday. Without further ado, let's jump into the list. If you follow me, you probably already follow Books and La La, but if you don't already, today we're going to be talking about my buzzword selections for 2022. If you're unfamiliar with what Buzzwordathon is, I will have the announcement video linked down below. It's a year-long reading challenge that's run by the amazing Books and Lala. She gets buzzwords or words that are used quite often in book titles. Comes out with a whole bunch of different categories, one for each month, and then you can do it one of two ways. For the first, from the first to the seventh of each month, you can read like as many books as you want in that category, or you can just read like one book per month that hits the category. So what I've done is I have put aside a, anywhere from one to three books per category as options that I have to pull out if I need them to uh, for each month for Buzzwordathon. <laughs> and today I'm going to be talking you through my Buzzwordathon options for the year of 2022. I found in the year of 2021, I was plowing through it, absolutely loving it, thinking about it every month making it a priority uh, all the way up till about June, July-ish. And then it kind of like left my memory. I still managed to finish all of the prompts by December. I don't know if I'm going to get December done, but it kind of stopped being like a priority. I wasn't mentioning in videos. I wasn't making it like an active thing to do. So I figured this year in 2022, what I'll do is I'll pull aside all of my options, have them categorized on my shelf, ready to go and see if that kind of does me any better. And then I'll also have this video to kind of look back on as a holding me accountable as to what books I read or not. So as I said, all the information will be linked down below if you want to go and check out Buzzwordathon yourself and participate. But let's go through my choices from my shelves. Now, what I have done is I have only chosen standalones or books that I own on my shelf currently as of December 2021. I will not be adding any additional books as an option for Buzzwordathon. I am trying to get through backlist and books that I already own and not start any new series. That's my like goal, I guess you can say. So let's get into January. So January's topics was the five W's, who, what, where, when, why, how, maybe it isn't the five W's, pretty much who, what, where, who, what, where, when, why, how. I saw her struggle in this, in the announcement video, and I was like, how is she not able to get this? Here I am trying to do it, and I'm struggling myself. Anyways, so the options that I have to choose from. Where the Truth Lies by Karina Kilmore, obviously, where. What the Wood Keeps by Katia Di Becerra. I have butchered that, I can tell. Uh, which is a thriller also. The girl who circumnavigated fairyland in a ship of her own making, and we obviously have who there. So we have a who, we have a what, and we have a where. <laughs> so they are some options that I can choose from for my January Buzzwordathon. In February, uh, I don't want to say it was just pronouns because there was other words involved as well, but it was kind of like you, me, we, I, those kind of words. So I have See You in September by Charity Norman, which is a thriller. I seem to have picked a lot of thrillers in this. I don't know why. If You Want to Make God Laugh by Bianca Miaris, which was actually the last book that I had on my 21 books that I want to read in 2021 that I didn't get to, probably won't get to in December. So I think it's only fair that I put this on my Buzzwordathon priority list. And then Marley and Me, which is by John Grogan. Uh, I've been putting this off because I know it's just going to wreck me. Uh, 
stories with dogs just always break my heart. So this is my other option for the February category, which is pronouns like you, you, or me. For March, we have locations or destinations, I think was the category that she put out. Uh, so I have the little coffee shop in Kabul. Obviously Kabul is a area uh, by Deborah Rodriguez. I've been thinking of unhauling this, but I've heard good things. So I figure if I put it on here, I'm more likely to pick it up. And that's my justification. Uh, she also said in her announcement video that the word valley can be considered a location. So I pulled out Cedar Valley by Holly Throsby. I have was gifted this one and I have stupidly not read it. <laughs> so I'm putting it on here so that I hopefully make it more of a priority than I have been because it's been on my shelf now for about two years and I need to get to it. And then obviously the Paris Library, obviously Paris is definitely a location or destination. Um, and this one is by Janet Skensleen Charles. So they're my three options for March for destinations. For April, the buzzword was little, big, like the size words, big, little, small, um, that kind of thing. So I have the true color of a little white lie, which is by Gabrielle Berg Moser. Uh, as you can see, there is tags in this. This is was meant to be on one of my ping pong TBRs, which I didn't get to. So I think it's only fair that this ends up on here as a potential option to get to for Buzzwordathon. We have Small Blessings, which is by Emily Bruin. Um, as you can see, it's got small in the title. That's the only reason I've added this. I have absolutely no other reason why other than the fact that it has small in the title. And then we have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which is by Becky Chambers. This is on so many of my favorite YouTubers, my favorite booktubers, favorite lists, and I've heard nothing but good things. I just haven't picked it up yet, and this is my way of trying to make that happen. <laughs> so they are my options for potential April Buzzwordathon books. For May, we have directional words such as up, down, left, right, back, forth, those kind of words. Uh, I can only get two options on my shelf that have these kind of words in the title. So I have Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore, which is a romance, historical romance, I believe, that I was, um, I found in someone's like unhaul box and I was like, I've heard really good things about this, seen it on booktube, should give it a shot. But then it obviously just fell to the wayside. So that's on there. And then we have No Turning Back by Joanne Lees. This is a non-fiction story that my godmother told me that I need to read. So I'm putting that on there because she gave it to me almost a year and a half ago and I still haven't read it. <laughs> so they are my two options for directional words for May. June was the word all in the title, A double A double L, all in the title. I only have one book on my shelf with all in the title. One. So it's All the Bright Places, which is by Jennifer Niven. I've actually wanted to read this one for a really long time so that I can watch the movie. Uh, but every time I think to grab it, something else grabs my attention. So I figure if I put this on here as the only option with all in the title, I have to read it for Buzzwordathon in the month of May and I'll finally get to it. <laughs> For June, we have book-related words. So the word book or something like pages, binding, um, I don't know, library, librarian, those kind of terms. So my options are The Binding by Bridget Collins, which I was actually thinking of unhauling because I've heard some really <laughs> negative things about, but I figured I'd throw it on here as an option anyways, because who knows, maybe I'll actually enjoy it and I'll be the odd person who likes it compared to other people. Another one that, as you can see, has tags in it, should have been read for a pick pong option, which I never got to, and that is Read Me Like a Book by Liz Kessler. Um, I don't know why I didn't get to this one. It's really, like, it, sh it should have happened by now. Um, but I think it was in one of those months I was in a bit of a slump, so the books I needed to read for my TBR got ignored and I read like romance books for the month. I think that this is one of the ones that fell to my romance smut 
spiral that's been happening. So yeah, putting it on there to hopefully give it a second chance. And one that I am really surprised I haven't read yet because I was so excited to get a copy of this. I scored it at my local bookshop um, and I bought it like with my dad and we did like photo shoot and everything because he was so excited to support my bookstagram. And uh, that is the grandest bookshop in the world. I love this cover. It is so gorgeous. It's rainbow. It's gold. It's just stunning. And yes, I do definitely want to read this. It sounds right up my alley, but yeah, I just haven't done it yet. So here we go. Bookshop. We're putting it on there. We're seeing how we go. So there is three options for June for book related words. So for July, we had, um, I think the term that she used was, um, items or objects. Uh, she gave an example door and I decided to just, um, put three books with the word door in here because why the hell not? So we have Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris, The Couple Next Door by Shari Lapina, and Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. <laughs> uh, so yeah, my three options all have door in them because that's the object that like she first mentioned and I just ran with it because I had a lot of books with door in the title and I thought it would be kind of fun to have to choose between the three. So that's what's happening for the month of July, I think. July, August. What month are we up to? March, April, May, June, July. The month of August. This is why I need to separate them, otherwise I forget. Now, for September, we had things like light, dark, um, bright, those kind of words, like light and dark uh, words. So... I have Serious Moonlight, which is by uh, Jen Bennett, which I was kindly gifted in a giveaway two years ago or so. Need to get to, haven't done so. Uh, a Sparkle of Light by Jodi Picoult. I have every single book by Jodi Picoult that has ever been written except for her latest one that was released like this month. And I've read every single one except for this. I need to read it to catch up. So... It's there. It needs to happen. And The Dark Field, which is by um, Alan Glynn. So I have a dark option and two light options as my different options for light and dark for the month of September. October's buzzword was creatures or animals. So for me, I just kind of went down the animal route because of so many books I have have animals in the title. So I have Good Dog, which is by Dan Gaiman, Gaiman Hart, Gaiman Hart, um, which is absolutely going to break me. As I said earlier in this video, dog videos just destroy me. Dog videos? Dog books just destroy me. Uh, but yeah, this one apparently follows the story of a dog who goes to af his afterlife and then he misses his owner so much he chooses to come back and it's just, oh, it's, I, anyways. Magpie Society, which is by Zoe Sugg and Amy McCulloch. I literally bought this one on a cover buy uh, because I'd seen it around, thought the title, thought the cover was beautiful, know absolutely nothing about it. So it's going on this list. And The Ravens, which is by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. I have seen a few people put this on their December TBRs and this is making me even more excited to read this. So... This is probably the one that I'm leaning towards out of these three. But yes, they are the three options for the October creatures category. In November, we had words ending in ING. So I only ended up with two on my shelf. The first is Maggie's Going Nowhere uh, by Rose Hartley. And the second is Breathing Underwater by Sophie Hardcastle. These have both been on my shelf for far too long. And I'm, I'm, I'm sensing a theme uh, in this video. Um, half my shelf has been on my shelf far too long. But anyways, these are my options for the November ending in ING category. And lastly, for December, we have numbers in the title. I have so many books on my shelf with numbers in the title, but I just picked two for this list because I ran out of shelf space to fit <laughs> my list on the way that I wanted to do it. So I am going with Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel and Three Secrets by Claire Boyd. 
today are my two December options for numbers in the title. So there you have it, guys. They are the Buzzwordathon books that I'm thinking I'm going to be putting on my list. Out of the books that I have selected, if you think there's one out of the three or one out of the two that I have selected that you think I should prioritize, let me know in the comments down below what it is and why. If there's any you think I should just unhaul and not even bother with, let me know down in the comments. And also, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you around. Give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see more things like this. And until next time, thanks so much and happy reading.